Oh my fellows, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. If you're familiar with my content, you'll know that I do lots of planty update videos or care tips videos, but today I thought I would mix things up a bit and talk a little bit about some of my houseplant regrets. Not so much in terms of plants that I wish I didn't buy, but more so not so great plenty decision making. So if you're interested to learn about what they are so that you can avoid some of these mistakes yourself, then definitely keep on watching. But before we get started, if you're new around here, my name is Grace and I post plant videos every week. So if you're interested in plenty content like this, feel free to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you get notified when next week's video is out. I've got six plenty regrets to share with you guys today. No doubt there are actually a lot more than six, but these are the six that I thought I would just address in this video. Number one on my houseplant regret list is definitely the fiddle leaf fig. Now don't get me wrong, I know a lot of people hate on this plant. I actually really adore the look of this plant. I just love how tall it gets and how bushy it gets and also the shape of the leaves. My regret with this plant is not being consistent enough in terms of having it in one location and also with the watering schedule. Fiddle leaf figs are absolute divas. They are very sensitive to any changes in their environment. For example, if it's acclimatized to one space in your home and you decide it doesn't look so great there anymore or if you want to transfer form the space and you move it into a different room or in a di into a different corner, it will throw a hissy fit and drop all its leaves. Well, maybe not all, but majority of the leaves. And that's exactly what's happened to me when I picked up my first fiddly fig from Ikea. Oh, that's another thing. When you pick up these plants from the nursery or the garden center or wherever you buy it from, they often look really lush and beautiful. But once you take it home, without a doubt, 99% of the time, it will throw a fit and drop a lot of leaves just purely because there is a change in environment and it's not anything that you've even done wrong. It's just, it doesn't like it. So let me know in the comments down below if this has happened to you because it's most definitely happened to me. And I'm gonna show you what my fiddly fig looks like right now. I'll insert some photos of what it looked like when I first got it. It was absolutely stunning. So bushy, so many growth points, but um, this is what it looks like today. Yup, it is mostly just leaves on top and it's got all these bare stems at the bottom. So if you're a fan of this plant and you want to keep it looking lush and beautiful, definitely think about the spot beforehand where you're going to put it and also the watering schedule and try and stick to it from the very beginning so that it gets accustomed to your rhythm. Second plant on the list is the Christia Vespertilionis. I don't have that anymore, but I'll insert a photo on screen so you can see what this plant looks like. So this is a really unique looking plant in my opinion. I really like the look of its delicate leaves and the fact that it is shaped almost like a butterfly. And because the leaves are so paper thin, it actually moves a lot in the wind. And I think that just looks really, really beautiful. However, on the downside of that because it is paper thin it is really hard to treat in the event that it has any sort of pests so the story with mine is i purchased it as a very little thing right at the beginning of my plant journey when i don't have too many plants and also i haven't had many infestations or outbreaks with pests so i was able to keep it relatively protected from all of that. So it grew really well for me for quite a while until I moved into this apartment and I kind of moved it around and exposed it to some other plants and somehow it caught spider mites. And so I could see these spider mites all over the plant and I was so desperate to save it because I grew this plant from such a small little thing with so much care that I would be devastated if I lost the plant. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to try and treat it with some neem oil. And let me tell you, neem oil is so strong that really sensitive, delicate plants like this Christia vespertilionis didn't react well at all. The next day, the leaves have all shriveled up and it literally just fell off and I was left with basically a stick. And even though the stick was still alive, it was trying to push out more growth points um, in the coming weeks or so. It never actually revived itself and it eventually just died off. So I think my regret with this plant is first of all, definitely need to keep it in an enclosure of its own so that it doesn't attract 
or it doesn't get any pests from surrounding plants. And secondly, I did notice that this plant is quite a thirsty one, so you need to keep it well hydrated because it is paper thin and so it doesn't really store any additional moisture anywhere else on the the plant so definitely requires a lot more water than you would think so if you're interested in this plant and want to give it a go i would highly recommend you be super super careful with it and yeah don't do what i did next on the list is my aglonema pictum tricolor now i don't regret purchasing this plant at all i think it is absolutely beautiful i'll insert some pictures of what this looked like throughout the growth progress or throughout my journey of growing this plant and with every new leaf it just brought me so much joy until it decided to put out an inflorescence and so at that point i was kind of you know getting a lot more confident in the plant journey in my skills and i thought i'm gonna try and pollinate this guy i think i did say that as well in some of my previous videos so I did. I collected some of the pollen from the first inflorescence and tried to pollinate the second one. And for a while, it looked like it was going okay. Like it was maybe forming some seeds. However, I don't think that it actually successfully pollinated and it just carked. Like it just turned yellow and fell off. And I was super, super disappointed because I sacrificed so many beautiful leaves for this experiment. I did consider this risk because it takes a lot of energy from a plant to put out an inflorescence and also to get it to grow seeds. So it's normal for it to use up energy from the older leaves and for the older leaves to turn yellow and fall off. So that's exactly what happened to my Aglonema pictum tricolor. And I think I was left with maybe four or five leaves from nine. And from a lush bushy plant, it turned into this awkward looking thing again similar to my fiddly fig where it was top heavy and completely bare at the bottom so let me go grab it and show you guys what it's currently looking like so this is what it looks like at the moment as you can see it's completely bare all the way down here and this is where the inflorescence happened so all the previous leaves have since fallen off and all of these are relatively new leaves since that event. I've noticed that the foliage is definitely smaller than it used to be, but I mean, it's still equally as beautiful with the camouflage effect. I think it's pretty obvious what my houseplant regret is for this plant. Would I do it again? Absolutely not. In future, if it were to put out an inflorescence again, I would definitely snip it off to preserve the older foliage because I just don't think it's worth it. And if you're enjoying this video so far, guys, please do me a big favor and hit that like button. It really helps out my channel. And while you're at it, leave me a comment down below to let me know what are some of the houseplant regrets that you've had or anything at all that you'd like to share. Next up on my houseplant regret list is the Philodendron Cream Splash. And let me tell you, this plant is so hard for me to grow. I don't know if any of you have this plant, but if you do, I'm really curious to hear about your experience in the comments down below below but I've definitely struggled with this one not only is it really slow growing for me it also starts to put out smaller and smaller leaves so I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here because I have tried letting it trail I've tried letting it climb and it does the same thing so another thing to note about this plant as well is that it is really sought after because of the creaminess however not all specimens have really obvious creaminess to it if you know what i mean and oftentimes you can very easily mistake it for a philodendron brazil which is a fraction of the cost so this is a plant that i've tried once or twice with and i don't think that i'll try ever again i do have one here that i'll show you so this is the philodendron cream splash that i purchased it has these beautiful large leaves and as you can see as it grows it gets smaller and smaller and even though the creaminess of it is pretty prominent in these smaller leaves it doesn't look great when it's so tiny you know what i mean so yeah i'm not really sure what i would do with this plant i have half the mind to just sell it but you know that's something that i'll think about moving forward because i think i've fallen out of love with this plant i would rather spend my time and attention on plants that actually bring me joy so that's the houseplant regret for this one i have definitely learned a lot 
throughout the years of owning plants and I think I am more drawn to Hoyas or like hardier plants nowadays. I don't really have the time or energy for the finicky plants anymore. So yeah, that's the philodendron cream splash. Next houseplant regret is my Tritoscantia tricolor and why I've included it in this list is because I and this is entirely my fault. It's my mistake. I know that these plants prefer to be bottom watered, but sometimes, you know, we get lazy and we just top water our plants and it doesn't like it because the leaves will start to crisp up if it comes into contact with water. And let me show you what it currently looks like. So no, actually, let me backtrack. I'll insert a photo of what it looked like growing really nicely from bottom watering and then what it looks like now. I feel like I'm airing all my dirty laundry here, but I think it is for a good cause. So that's okay. Let me show you what the Tritoscantia tricolor is looking like. This is obviously not what you want. Um, it was such a beautiful lush pink pot before. Um, but yeah, this is what happens when you top water it. The leaves just crisp up and they really don't like it so if i were to do it again um, definitely bottom water it and keep it hydrated because they actually do use a lot of water and they get thirsty very quickly this is not a lost cause yet i can still cut off some of these um, healthy parts of it and try again these are actually weeds and they are pretty hard to kill the challenge is keeping them looking good so will I try this again? I think I will. I'm going to give it one more go and if it's going to cause me grief and end up looking like this, then into the bin it goes. All right, last but not least is a very sad story because I have gone on and on about this plant in my previous videos, so many of them, um, and it's my Mandula pothos. I have bad news. <laughs> because I think the last time I updated you guys on it, I repotted it and upsized the pot and it was growing really nicely. But the thing is, once you repot a plant into a larger pot, there is more substrate around the roots. And so if there is too much water and the plant is not using the water quickly enough, there is a risk or there is a very high risk of root rot. And that's exactly what happened to my Mandula pothos. After a while, I saw that a lot of the leaves started to yellow. So I checked the roots and sure enough, it had gone brown and mushy and it was just on the decline. So I panicked and I decided, you know what, I'm gonna chop it up and create many, many cuttings. So I planted it all into a new pot now or actually I planted some into soil and some I have um, propagating in water and some I have propagating in moss. And trust me, there were, a lot of, <laughs> there were a lot of cuttings that I took because it was quite an established plant. But let me show you what the restart or like what it currently looks like now restarted. All right, so imagine this when it was all lush and trailing. And yeah, this is the restart pot. So. I think it actually looks pretty good. There are maybe around about five cuttings in here and I'm hoping that it's going to grow quickly for me and it's going to bush out because these are pothos plants and they don't really take too long to grow. But yeah, wish me luck and uh, hopefully by this time next year it'll look the same as it did pre overwatering. <laughs> I'm still a little bit devastated as to what happened because some of their super large beautiful leaves have yellowed and died and I always get a sense of like sadness when some of my favorite leaves on my plants die. Um, I know it's a circle of life and they are not permanent fixtures. They are eventually going to wither and die off but you know it's still a sad thing so that's why I have my plant Instagram to capture all these beautiful leaves and I'll forever have a memory of them. And of course my YouTube videos as well. So yeah, so that's the story with my Mandula pothos. Definitely a regret. So one lesson learned from here is to make sure you don't overwater your plants, especially since you've upsized them. Definitely err on the side of underwatering in the beginning and kind of monitor the plant and see how it goes before you decide on a schedule for watering yeah so that's my two cents on that one that's it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit um, if you want to see more planty content like this feel free to check out these videos right here
Thanks so much for watching and until next time, stay mellow my fellows.